My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're still going on about bloody outboards. Very quickly, I just want to say this isn't going to be the extent of the channel forever. What happens is I do a video, I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of this, I do a lot of that awesome work in the background and I just want to get it out, done and out. So it's that base covered, it's fresh in my mind, it's fresh in your mind. We'll move on and we'll move on pretty damn quickly. Any road, um, I usually look at these things and I think about them from, and then, you know, my experience and the engineering principles that I use on a daily basis and so on. And uh, it's weird when you start actually digging into a, um, a classification of engine, just say, outboards, right? When you start digging, you actually... I actually say things and then actually find out that there's things to back up what I say um, without doing the research in the first place. It's just a nice feeling, you know. Um, but regardless. So let's go through a, 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 a quick few things. There's going to be a bit of everything in this. So this is the... Um, this is all new to me. This is the Seven Marine um, engine. Now, Seven Marine have stopped production Um they were bought out by Volvo or a, a part of Volvo a while back and then Volvo have now said because we want to stop um, people having fun and because we care about a generation, um, about our missions even though we're still intensive farming and burning, well just shit, um, we're going to choke all your fun out because obviously that 8% of emissions is the real problem, not the other 92%. But, <laughs> little rant there. But, um, so basically, Volvo pulled out. But this was the engine, or one of the engines. This is a 557. You know, I know these aren't numbers are hard to, but you'll, you'll get with the numbers. It's meant to be 557 horsepower, or something related to that, I've read. It is a LSA, um, oh, what do you call it now? Cav uh, not a Cavalier, what was it? I did write it down. Cadillac, LSA engine. Thank God for that. <laughs> Thank God I wrote it down. And as you can see, it is, it, there's an Eaton, an Eaton supercharger on the top. There is a LSA V8 engine. Uh, let's go back to my things. Six point something litre. Uh, 6.162, so 6.2 litres. Eight V8. 103 by 92, quite over square, uh, over square, not quite. Uh, seven, it, it is, but I mean, not that much. 770 cc per cylinder, which is really important. It is, uh, you know, what you'd expect for an engine this size. Um, 770 cc per cylinder, that means, a, you know, 103 millimeter diameter piston. We've done videos, I've already done videos about this Alpha Dan crap, about this what size piston to what size cc so on all this stuff uh, zf marine 70 grand an engine uh 474 kilos 745 newton meters top 5400 rpm it's the engine was released in 2009 the engine got discontinued in 2015 it's got a hundred thousand mile validation now all that means is is that uh, GM themselves actually run probably a lot more than one, but up to 100,000 miles. They also did 6,400 dyno hours and 270 hours wide open throttle. Um, and that's just some specs. Wonderful. So it's basically a car engine with a few modifications. The modifications actually aren't so much to do with the engine particularly. The modifications are to do with um, the uh, muffling of the noise, um, the exhaust, the cooling of the system, so on and so forth, right? It's just, you can call it three things. They call it the power head, it's basically the bloody engine. And then you've got the gearbox and the air management system, both exhaust and intake kind of thing. And then you've got this bit at the back, 
which controls the steering and its pitch and all that rubbish. And then just the gearbox at the bottom, the shaft, the reduction bit and the prop. This bit's extremely simple, really. Prop designs are quite sexy, but if you, I mean, there's not much going on down here. Uh, in the middle, there's not much really going on. And then there's an engine, but this is, in a sense, you can think the top bit is the car bit, the middle bit is the boat bit, and the bottom bit is, well, it's just a fucking angle grinder, basically. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, in a nutshell, a very, very, very crude nutshell. Any road. Uh, where was the other thing I got? So what I wanted to do is just to prove the point about this engine is that in the last video I said about piston speeds. Now the whole point of comparing to the Ducati is the Ducati is screaming away. And I wanted to show that even if you have a lot lower RPM, you can have an engine that has stupidly high RPM. But if you have smaller pistons, the Alpha Dan example is still way higher in force compared to the Ducati, even though it's doing a third of the RPM. In other words, it's mass times acceleration is where forces come from. And if you know, if you have you can have really high RPM, but it's the mass that kills you. Right? It's the mass that kills you. Right, so what I've got here, this is a Volvo, um, a D11K, and it has a displacement of uh, 10.8 litres, six cylinders, which works out around about 1800cc-ish. And again, it has a 152mm bore. This is a diesel, just ignore that. Uh, the pistons are very heavy, and because the pistons are very heavy, we have a low RPM. But this is the thing, the Alpha Dan system, its rod and piston are basically like a piston, right? They move in a sinusoidal reciprocating motion only, right? So this rod and this piston, even though we don't know what the rod is, it has to, um, even if it weighed exactly the same as a piston and con rod out of a normal engine, it, of a similar size, just say this, not this, this is quite a heavy piston because it's diesel. But even if it did weigh the same, um, the forces would be far too high, right? And the reason why is because people were saying in the last video, ah, Matt, but you don't understand. If the pistons are bigger and the rod is bigger, then everything's heavier, stronger. Right, so well, that's the bit we're going to get to now. Now, I was going to do some... Oh, it, working out journal and main journals and crank pin diameters is, is it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work, and I didn't want to do all that work just for this, especially when I don't know what half the system is. So... Instead, and this is blown up because this is one of the main points and people with phones can see it. I've got a list of engines here, uh, ZX7R. Um, unknown was, I got some numbers for a large-ish engine. Um, not a large engine, I've got a motorbike crank, but I can't wait. It's, it's a Honda, but I can't wait it's for. Um, an EJ20, so an Impreza, and then we've got stuff like that. And what I want to, all these different things size. So it's basically crank pin, Main journal size, the CC and the horsepower. As you can see, it's a bit gappy because it's not easy to find these journal IDs when you're trying to do all these other videos as well. If I had a week to two, three weeks to sit here and go and find stuff, then I'll just get a lot of manuals and get you some massive data point set. Can't be bothered. And I can't be bothered to, be bothered to do the um, journal diameters. It's because the numbers won't be much different than this. So here we've got a Volvo D12. It's a 12 litre, um, makes 775 horsepower. Um, it's a 12 litre, straight six, I believe, but it's a six cylinder. So basically the cylinders come out at two cc, at uh, two litres per uh, cylinder. And as you can see, the crank pins are 92 and the OD of the journals is 108. Alpha Dan, on the other hand, reckons they're going to get 654 horsepower. They reckon they're going to have 1,875cc, uh, 1, so 1 1.9, let's call it 1.9 litres. It's not far off. So let's just say that the uh, main journals will be 100 and the crank pins are going to be 90 millimetres in diameter. Big fucking journals. And here's a graph just to go with that, shows you how it isn't an exponential or anything like that. It's pretty linear as you go up in size 
right? Although the scales aren't exactly brilliant, but yeah. Um, so, what you can do then, if it'll bloody work, here we go. So, this is the Alpha Dan engine. I'll just turn it that way to hide that a bit. So, basically, I've got this paired up so that when you cut it, like so, and obviously there won't be any hole here for a wrist pin, good jump pin, whatever you want to call it. But as you swing this thing around, I've just mated it um, so that when you swing it around, it basically just follows the distance. So this is what a sinusoidal crank looks like. The motion of the piston, it's just straight up and straight down. You know, there's no acceler there's no difference in acceleration. And this would be approximately, based off their numbers, the size of the main journals and crank pins, sod off SolidWorks. And these are the ball sizes, right? So they eventually give a ball size. Did I find that? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll find that later. They eventually did give a ball size. And it's 145 millimetres. They didn't give it to me directly. I've just basically extrapolated from what they had before when it was 8.5 litres and 6,000 RPM. Only just a year ago. So, um, piston, bore, that's the stroke and the bore to give you 7.5 litres. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the cylinder bore like that. And then I've just made this shit up, right? Just to make it look a bit more not as boring. And um, this is what will make you laugh. The uh, This in the background is the LSA engine. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, the LSA, let me find it. Uh, Alpha Dan, it was crank specs, here we go. So this is a, uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty much, it's a 440 Hemi, something for something it's the kind of crank you get in one of these what is it i didn't go for a specifically light one you can get really light ones and this is not um com uh, comparison for a four cylinder this is a v8 one this is something similar to what you would find in this right this is the crank you'd find in this kind of thing and it's 76 pounds or as the title says, 34 kilos. This thing on the other hand, if I select all of these, like that, and I go to evaluate and go to mass properties, this thing was 63 kilos, right? That's fucking shit loads, right? This crank was an awful lot. Now you might go, it's stronger, it's stronger true and it's heavier and so is the rod and so are the pistons right and you might say well then but it's fine but it's like well no because the engines that have bearings this size right do not rev up to 5500 rpm with the masses involved and the size of the crankshafts involved they don't because they would literally explode Right, or let me put it this way, they'll run for about six minutes, more accurately, 6.1846 seconds, uh, six minutes, sorry. They just fucking explode, right? You start getting torsional stress, fucking harmonics that, you know, they'll wreck the dead. It's just a mess, right? It's just all over the place. So, what you do is it's this you make your crank stronger which means that you have to make it heavier. And now, because mass times, accelera times acceleration, or basically RPM, we'll just call it RPM, um, mass times acceleration is force, because we've made it heavier, and the rods and the pistons heavier, we now have to make everything stronger. And now we've made it stronger, the way we make it stronger is, unfortunately, is we make it heavier. And then we keep on going down this loop of, oh, what the hell are we doing? And the problem with that is, is it's this, you know, like I say, it's this vicious circle of we increase the force, increase the stress, which means we need to make it stronger. We make it stronger by making it heavier. By making it heavier, we increase the force, which means it increases the stress. And we just go round and round and round and round and round and round, like an engine. And it's like, where does this end? You can't just keep on doing it and keep on doing it. It's exactly the same principle as space flight, right? 
You want to go further and farther and faster in a rocket, you have to have more fuel. You have more fuel, it weighs more. And then, because it weighs more, you need more fuel to lift it. And it keeps on going and going. And you say, well, how do you ever manage to make anything bigger? And the, the way you do it is payload size, right? The way you do it with the rocket is, if you're only trying to carry 600 kilos of astronaut and his sat-nav and all that shite, if you just have to take that, that remains the same while increasing the rocket fuel, and as long as the engines stay the same, then you can you eventually come to a, a like a sweet spot where you can get away with it. But if you want to, you know, and the way it works with engines is this. You keep on going stronger, more forces, and you do this vicious circle I've been talking about. And then what you do is you go, do you know what? Force is mass times acceleration. If we can reduce the acceleration, then we don't have to keep on upping the mass and the weight or the strength. And the way you do that is by reducing your RPM. In other words, you have two engines, right? This V8 engine, this thing here, revs to 5,500 RPM, but it has smaller parts. Yeah, there's more of them, but each part itself that's creating the force, the individual parts that are creating this reciprocating force is lighter, right? If you want to go more power, then you add more of them, yeah? Now, each one you add, each silly, you know, bank of Vs, so instead of a V8, you become a V10, V12, V14, blah, blah, you go on and on and on and on. Every time you add another set of cylinders, you go, well, the whole thing's getting heavier. Yes, but the forces are remaining the same, right? Because it's just more the, the negative forces, in a sense, not the, the force that comes out of the engine, obviously. The forces in each individual unit, so you think of each V, each pair, each V twin, one, two, three, four, you add another one, another one, another one, another one. Every time you do that, uh, the forces are the same. There are, there's a caveat to that, your crankshaft is getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer and the forces don't, you know, aren't the same. We're not, not worried about reciprocating forces now, we're worried about um, coupling and harmonics and torsional stresses and basically it's twist, it's torsional stresses that you're bothered about. So this is why you might see in tractor pulling, um, which is great to watch for about five minutes, uh, they have multiple engines, actually engines like this, but they have multiple engines, um, you know, all geared together through a gearbox. And that, you know, you do that instead. You don't just keep on, and again, why the Bugatti Veyron? You want 16 cylinders? Ah, you start getting into whipping and all sorts of problems with your crankshaft. So you do something where you try and make it as short as possible. Right? Absolutely fantastic. We all get that. Apart from the people that, well, Albert and his mate, um, so, Albert said something in his video, which was this. Was the inline four as being, you know, an engine that obviously had half as many moving parts as the V8. The design of the block was short. The crankshaft was short. Which is fucking hilarious. It's shorter. Right, so this is, like I say, in the background, to scale, this line here, there, is 740 millimeters across there and if i just get this just to show you on the model right oh, bloody hell fire there to there right is about 718 so you can see how we're a, a tad bit longer yeah and like i say this one it's going to show us how long that 740 and then this these two ticker marks on this drawing are 740 you can see how they all line up absolutely wonderful this is the LSA engine with the Eaton supercharger tucked in, nestled in there, right? Just the engine. You can see there's the front view and this is the side view, right? So if you look at the comparison between the two, the LS engine, this here is the flywheel, right? So there's, the, you know, it's an eight bolt pattern flange there. This is the flywheel. So the crank finishes there, right? And the end of the engine, if we just move this out of the way, the end of the engine's bloody here. The crank nose sticks out here, you've got a load of pulleys and drive and all that rubbish. But the engine, it, the, the engine, you see the end of the sump, it stopped there, right? It stops right in between these two cylinders. So in other words, 
The LSA engine is from there, basically to there, to the third cylinder, between the third and fourth cylinder. All this gubbins, if we flip this around, we can see there, look, this, this is the end of the engine. You can see the cylinder head there. You can see this, um, I wish you wouldn't do that. This oval shape here, that's the cylinder head. You can see the spark plugs and stuff and injector rail and all that shite. This at the front, this is all the pulleys and accessories, water pump, all that shit, you know, all the other stuff that you need, your alternator, all that rubbish, right? On the front of it, which the engine needs. This Alphadan engine is the length of this entire system and it hasn't got anything with it, right? This is where the deck height is, because like I say, if you turn this around, this is where the pistons, um, oh, there we go. That's where the piston, yeah, that's, that's TDC. There's no cylinder head thing on this yet. So you stick a cylinder head on this, you're going to be at the top of here. So you're going to be as tall, right? We haven't even got a sump or anything on the bottom of this. So you're going to be as big, um, top to bottom. You know what I mean? So basically the height, if you want to call it that way, the height of this engine, right? You're going to be as big. And from front to back, you're going to be longer, right? Because you're going to have to stick all these accessories either on the front on the back, you could put them on the side, but to put them on the side is away from the drive. So basically you're gonna make the whole thing a lot wider. And this thing is quite skinny, but when you start packing all this shit onto it, exhaust manifolds, all that rubbish, you know, this thing is rather compact. The exhaust manifolds come down, you can see them there on this. You know, I mean, they've stuck the supercharger in there. Why they think they're going to run a similar CC to this engine, because this engine's a 6 litre, this is a 7 litre, a 7 litre. Why they think they're going to get 650 horsepower out of it, I don't know. When this thing, which is a real engine, that has been designed um, for 50 years, the development of this thing, just slowly chipping away at the, the American V8. Um, it only makes... What is it? It makes five seven. Uh, what is it? Five five seven with a supercharger fitted. How they think they're going to get this natural aspirated, wobbly, wonky piece of shit to do it without something like that? You imagine sticking a supercharger on this as well. In other words, it's not smaller. It's bigger. The stress is on the crank. It's you know it's a long crankshaft. Is this thing? Um, like I say, the other crankshaft stops here. So you've got this entire other. Web and other bearing, you know, bearing here and all that shit. This is actually shorter than it should be. The whole thing would be fucking massive, right? Yes, it is skinnier, but I don't know how many boat enthusiasts, boaters, sailors, whatever you want to call them, are really bothered about how wide these are. If they are wide, you know, and they are wide, or if the, the width does matter, then you can obviously stick a lot more closer together. But Alfred and I are saying they can use less. They can use less of these outboards. Don't know where they're getting this bullshit from, right? It's just, it's just pipe dreams. It's just making shit up. But uh, it definitely isn't smaller. Not, not in the way I'd, you know, not the way I'd think. You can say, well, it's not as wide. Let's just say it's half as wide without, you haven't put any accessories on it yet. Um, but this is the, the last question I have. He reckons that the benefit of having an inline four is less parts, right? This has, if you make this engine in the same way that this LSA engine is made, valves, pistons, rods, cylinder head, cylinder bank, that's about it. Right, bearing shells. That they're the less parts. The problem is, is that these parts are a lot bigger. The crank is a was twice as heavy. The pistons are fucking huge. The forces are huge. Everything is just out of proportion. The driving for answers guy said it. You will never find. He says, I dare you. You know, you try and find a mass production engine that's seven point whatever litre. 7.5 litre that's an inline four and you won't that is exactly right right that is probably the only thing in that video that made any fucking sense um is yes you won't there's a reason or let me put it another way there's reasons um catastrophic snapping shit in half and throwing metal at your reasons 
Um, and we're not even talking about fatigue and life and stuff like that. It's, it's a no starter right from the get go. There's a reason why they don't make inline fours that big that turn that fast. All right, you just don't do it. And like I said before, Mercury, their new engine is a V12. All right, that's <laughs> that. That is the perfect example because this thing, you know, is a V8. This this um, seven seven eleven <laughs> seven marine engine. Um, look, you can see the engine. It stops there, right? And you can see the headers. So the it comes out to about there. There's all this other shit in there, filters and pumps and all sorts of rubbish. There's the drive at the back. So obviously it's coming out the back. There's no flywheel on it. It's got a new casing. There's, there'll obviously be some bevel gears or maybe just a series of gears, a gear ring there, into here, and then there's more. This is, I think it's electronic gearbox jobby, and it's all. And then there's this fucking the exhaust muffling device where it blows it out at low speed and blows it somewhere else, fucking at high speed. All this rubbish. These hydraulic actuators for these tie rods. All this, you know, to steer it and all that. And is it? Your engine, your Alpha Dan engine, starts there and finishes here, and that's just the crank. Now I know we haven't got um, depth here. You know this thing's it's nearly as it's nearly as wide as it is uh, long, kind of thing. But what is the benefit other than that, which he actually didn't mention? Right, he goes on about twenty six inches on centre and all this shite. Uh, weirdly enough, that says twenty six inches. Isn't that strange? Regardless, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's not happening. You, it, it, the engine is uh, fundamentally broken before you even start. And I want to know the benefits. So to finish this video off, because you know, I could just talk about this shit forever. To finish this off, what are the benefits? So I have an inline four, less parts, but the parts are heavier. And it'll cost about the same, basically, when you work out in, in raw material. Um, what are the other benefits? It's thinner. You know, it's skinnier. Well, he hasn't really used that as a selling point, so I don't think that's his point. What else does it do? It's, um, it's high performance. Well, you haven't built one, and I don't believe it, not compared to this thing, because this thing has a supercharger, which, you know, everyone has more fun with a supercharger in their life. Um... What are the benefits? Cost, it's going to cost the same. I did find out the cost, actually, of the, what is it? Like, yeah, it's $70,000 70, an engine. Fucking hell. There's a reason why I don't have a boat. And uh, it's not just the fact that I hate water and can't sail. Um, yeah, what are the benefits? Oh, it hasn't got a... Uh, he, 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 he went around the houses. But the driving Francis guy, Get him back on the phone. I want to know, because I can't be bothered talking to him, right? Because I'll get very, very unprofessional. People have said to me, why don't you ring him up and have an interview with him yourself? I will get very, very unprofessional and just call him a cunt. And um, it's a lot better I do this on my terms. I'm a lot calmer doing it like this, because he'll just fuck me off with the bullshit answers, and it'll just turn into a shouting match. Because I'll ask him and he'll avoid, and I'll ask him and he'll avoid it, and I'll ask him and he'll avoid it, or he'll just start saying, "No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't." Like he'll say, "This engine's this engine's smaller." Well, you need to define exactly what that means, right? But any road, what are the benefits? It makes it sound like this, you know. And this is the other thing: driving for answers. This guy, he was the one who made a video that says, as far as I know. He hadn't spoken to Alpha Dan by then, and he was the one who was, as he says in his video, researching, and he found something that he thought was interesting. He was sceptical. Why was he sceptical? What were you sceptical about, right? And what seemed to change your mind? What made you write, this is a game changer, right? Because it literally says it in the title card, the thumbnail for the video. Why would you want this? We have a solution to this problem, right? Why would you want a massive inline four? Oh, it's not very complicated. But 
the fucking enable an Airbus A three eighty is complicated. Doesn't mean we don't fucking build it. And it, no one has actually said there's one. Of, there's a, a, a couple of science deniers who are backing this guy up who emailed me saying you're a fucking horrible cunt. This bloke maybe he's a genius. Blah blah blah. As, what's the benefits? I said to them, what are the benefits? And only one guy actually had a conversation with backwards and forwards, and he said, actually, I can't think of fucking anything of why he'd want to actually do this. Any road, that's gone on for long enough. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. So, from you know, when I look at things from an engineering perspective, I always say to myself, where is the problem? Let me get rid of the problem, and let's find a new solution, a new way of doing that, okay? Let me get rid of the problem. Let me... Let me let me get rid of the problem. Shut your fucking mouth! No problem, Shut the fuck up, you cunt! Let me get rid of the problem. Shut it!